Welcome to the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Before we get started, I want to ask you to please subscribe, and I want to ask you to please share these out on Facebook. And uh, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up over here. I've said this a few times, but this time I really mean it. Uh, this one is uh, going to be a lot different from what we normally go through. Um, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce this girl's name. Her name is Karen Cupsonet. Uh, she played Hannah Carter uh, in the episode uh, A Feud is a Feud between the Wakefield and the Carters. She played the daughter that was wanting to get married. Um, I did a little, I looked up uh, some stuff on her and uh, uh, she was murdered. Um, she was strangled to death. And there's a lot of theories going around as to why. Well, there was. I'm not even sure they looking into it now, but uh, because it's still unsolved. Uh, so let's get into that and let's, let's see what it's about. Now, on the last day of her life, uh, she had dinner with the future Lost in Space cast member Mark Goddard and his wife, uh, Mary Rogers Goddard, at their house on Coldwater Canyon uh, Drive in Beverly Hills. That's kind of near Mulholland Drive. She was due at 6.30, but arrived an hour late by cab. Um, the couple said uh, she only toyed with her food during the meal, and Marcia told uh, officers in the L.A. County Sheriff's Office that during the dinner with her, her lips seemed numb, and her voice was funny, and she moved her head at odd angles. The Goddards also noticed that her pupils were constricted. Mark told authorities that he confronted her about uh, her altered state during the meal, and she began to cry putting her arm around him. At one point during the meal, uh, she told her friends an unsubstantiated story about a baby that had been abandoned on her doorstep early that day. At 8.30 p.m., a cab arrived at her home, and she promised to telephone the Goddards soon. She apparently went straight home after dining with friends. She was visited by freelance writer Edward Stephen Rubin shortly after. Uh, the two were then joined by actor Robert Hathaway around 9.30, they told detectives they watched TV, including the Danny Kay show. Uh, they all drank coffee until she fell asleep, sitting next to them on the couch. She woke and went to her room. The men either turned the TV set off or simply lowered the volume. Uh, was three days later, it was still playing with the low volume and made sure the doors locked behind them before departing at 11.15. Hathaway said Reuben and, and he had returned to his place and were later joined by her boy, by uh, Karen's boyfriend, Andrew Prine, who was also Hathaway's neighbor. The three young men watched television and talked to about 3 a.m. The Goddards went to uh, Karen's apartment on November 30th after she failed to telephone the couple as promised. Mark stated that he had a funny feeling that something was wrong, and upon arriving at Karen's apartment, the couple found her nude body lying on the couch. Mark initially assumed that she had died from a drug overdose. Upon searching her apartment, investigators from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office found prescriptions for uh, Desoxin, uh, Meltown, uh, Ambicel, and other medications. Authorities also found a note written by Karen that reflected in some detail her emotions regarding issues in her life, her parents, self-image, problems with boyfriend, and people she admired. Coroner Harold Cade concluded that due to the fracture of the bone in her throat, Karen had been strangled. Her death was officially ruled a homicide. Investigators from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office determined that the story she, Karen had told the Goddards about an abandoned baby on the doorstep, which she also had told Andrew Prime by telephone, was false. Neither the Sheriff's Office nor the L.A. Police Department had received a report of a baby found abandoned anywhere in her apartment building on the day before her murder. Now, there's theories to this, and I'm only going to get into one because I find it interesting, although I'll give you what the theories are. Uh, there was a lover's quarrel, of course, and uh, the biggie uh, is a connection to John F. Kennedy. Her death was first mentioned in a connection with John F. Kennedy's assassination in 1967 by researcher Penn Jones Jr. in the self-published book Forgive My Grief. Jones cited a, a, an Associated Press wire service story about an unidentified woman who placed a phone call on November 22, 1963 from the vicinity of Oxnard, California, about 50 miles northwest of L.A. 
And Jones claimed this woman was Karen Cupsonet. I'm sorry, I don't know I'm sure of that pronunciation. Uh, the woman who dialed her local operator roughly 20 minutes before the shooting of the president in Dallas stated that he was going to be shot. Jones alleged that Karen was attempting to warn someone in the impending assassination. Jones claimed that she was told of the intimate assassination by her father, Herb, uh, who was allegedly had been given advance notice by Jack Ruby, the Dallas nightclub owner who fatally shot President Kennedy, uh, accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald. Jones speculated that Irv may have met Ruby in Chicago in the 40s. Jones speculated that Karen had been murdered by representatives of the Italian-American Mafia, who silenced her and sent a message to her father to remain silent about why President Kenny and Lee Harvey Oswald had been shot and who was act actually responsible. Irv denied that he or his daughter had prior knowledge of the shootings of the President or Oswald, this was supported by Karen's friends, actor Earl Holloman, Holloman's then-girlfriend, and Karen's boyfriend, Andrew Prine, all whom traveled to Palm Springs with Karen on November 22nd. Karen reportedly seemed upset and shocked about television and radio coverage of the shootings, and she saw and heard in Palm Springs. She did not reveal any foreknowledge of the events. Although in 2013, the Venture County Star commemorated the 50th anniversary of JFK's assassination with a long article about the unknown woman, who had used a phone in the vicinity of Oxnard, 50 miles uh, away from Karen's home, immediately before the assassination, citing FBI documents that were declassified decades after the events of November 63. Ventura County Star article claims that two telephone operators with General Telephone Company, who list, listened to the unknown woman talking for approximately 15 minutes, gave the FBI a description of the voice. FBI agents questioned the two operators several hours after the assassination. Their descriptions of the woman's voice did not match Karen's, especially in regard to uh, Karen's age. In 2013, the article adds that two operators believed that the woman on the phone was mentally disturbed. Regarding Irv's alleged connection to Jack Ruby, the Warren Commission did not find any proof that he had interacted with Ruby in Chicago before 1947 when Ruby moved from Chicago to Dallas. The commission questioned many Chicagoans who had interacted with Ruby. None of them had prior knowledge that he was going to shoot Oswald. I just thought, wow, that was really impressive, uh, uh, suspicious, and, and really interesting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the lover's quarrel theory, and then we'll call it a day on this one. <laughs> uh, during the course of their investigation, uh, the Sheriff's Department named Andrew Prine as one of the chief suspects and questioned by law enforcement. Prine said he had talked with Karen twice by phone on Wednesday, a day before her murder, claiming he was trying to patch up a lover's quarrel between them. Detectives considered it possible that after Prine learned the anonymous threat uh, letters both he and Karen had received had been created by Karen herself, that her, that, and their unresolved argument gave him a motive for murder. In addition, both Edward Rubin and Robert Hathaway, the two men who possibly been the last to see her alive were friends of Prime. They were also eventually named as suspects. In 88, uh, her father, Irv, published a memoir in which he revealed that he and his wife, Essie, believed that Andrew Pine had nothing to do with their daughter's murder. He was suspicious of, suspicious of a person still alive when he wrote the memoir that had no connection to Prime. When I saw that she had been murdered, I just blew my mind. Uh, such uh, she was <laughs> the character she portrayed such a sweet pretty thing had not, she may have been too I don't know that sounds to me like she had some issues uh, but I'll cut this right now but since it's so long but I would appreciate you uh, watching uh, I, I'm gonna look some more into this and see what I can find have a great day God bless and I'll be praying for you